HMS Invincible is the lead ship of the Invincible class aircraft carriers. Originally built as a through deck cruiser, she became a light anti submarine warfare carrier. If you want the specs and design history, I recommend you go take a look at the video of the class I released on Thursday, or brief number 16. Invincible was ordered from Vickers Shipbuilding and Engineering on the 17th of April 1973, and then subsequently laid down in Barrow and Furness on the same day. However, the ship's construction was delayed by design changes and industrial action, and so she wouldn't be launched until May 3rd 1977. She would finish construction and be accepted into the Royal Navy on the 19th of March 1980, and after some sea trials, she would be commissioned on July 11th, 1980. More trials and workup followed, including live firing of sea dart, which somehow set fire to the rope locker under the ski ramp. She would have her air wing join during the workup period, and then she was declared operational on the 19th of June, 1981 joining Hermes as the two operational carriers in service. Invincible's initial air wing would consist of five Sea Harriers from 801 Naval Air Squadron and Sea King helicopters from 820 Naval Air Squadron. During August and September of 1981, she would take part in the Naval Exercises Ocean Venture and Ocean Safari, where in the latter, the only safari animals they were going to find at sea were probably going to be some sea lions. On the 25th of February 1982, after several months of negotiations, the Australian government announced it was going to buy the Invincible for £175 million as a replacement under the name HMAS Australia for the Royal Australian Navy's HMAS Melbourne, which was planned to be decommissioned. Australia planned to make minimal changes to the carrier, adding more fuel and replacing some of these ships' computers. Initially, at least, it was planned to operate helicopters only, and the sale was actually confirmed by the Ministry of Defence. However, on the 2nd of April 1982, Argentina decided to invade the Falklands Islands. Three days later, a naval task group headed by Invincible and Hermes left Her Majesty's naval base Portsmouth bound for the South Atlantic. On the 20th of April, the UK government formally ordered its defence forces to bring the islands back under British control. Along with eight Sea Harriers, the Invincible's air group included 12 Sea King helicopters that were slightly larger than the ship had originally been designed to accommodate. Now, small machine guns were added around the flight deck and the island for close-in weapons. On the 23rd of April, while en route from Ascension Island to the Falklands, Invincible mistakenly locked her Sea Dart missile system onto a Brazilian Airlines DC-10, rather than an Argentine Air Force Boeing 707 that had been monitoring the fleet's movement. The previous day, Task Group Commander Rear Admiral Sandy Woodward had sought permission from Commander-in-Chief Admiral Sir John Fieldhouse to shoot down the 707 as he believed it was actively indicating a raid would be launched from the Argentine aircraft carrier the Vinta Centro de Mayo. As the 707 was no direct threat to the fleet, i.e. not carrying anti-ship missiles, Woodward ordered weapons tight and continued tracking the aircraft's course while a sea harrier was dispatched to investigate. The Harrier pilot reported it was a Brazilian airliner, with all normal navigation and running lights on. Details on the Harrier's interception appeared in the Brazilian press, along with a claim that the DC-10's passengers were alleged to have been frightened. The ship would come under direct fire only once during the conflict, and this was by an Argentine aircraft who was able to launch an Exocet anti-ship missile at the carrier. Now they gained the lock on the ship and then deployed the missile, and whilst the missile was in flight, it lost lock on the ship, but then unfortunately locked onto the very unfortunate SS Atlantic conveyor, which then subsequently hit. But the critical thing was that the Atlantic conveyor was carrying Harriers and also the very, very rare Chinook helicopter which were needed to basically move the Marines from San Carlos water over to the Falklands capital of Port Stanley. During and even after the war, the Argentinian government claimed that they actually damaged or even sunk Invincible, which, well, for starters, there's many pictures of her sailing back into Portsmouth during the Falklands reunion, so evidently she didn't sink. But then again, she 
served on for another 25 years, roughly. So, I don't know. Is Argentina just pulling stuff out of their butts, or are they living in an alternate reality? Who knows? Anyway, on the 1st of June, the Australian Prime Minister, Malcolm Fraser, advised the British government that the sale of Invincible to Australia could be cancelled if desired. And in July of 1983, a year after the Falklands conflict, the MOD announced that it had withdrawn its offer to sell Invincible so it could maintain a three-carrier force. In December of 1983, Invincible was refused to use the dry dock facilities in Sydney when the Royal Navy decided to diverge that the Australian authorities, whether or not, the ship was actually carrying a nuclear weapon. Between 1993 and 1995, Invincible was deployed in the Adriatic for Operation Deny Flights and then Operation Deliberate Force during the Yugoslav Wars. In 1997, flying the flag of Rear Admiral Alan West, Commander UK Task Group, Invincible led a deployment that included three Commando Brigade Royal Marines. Now, during the following two years, Invincible contributed in Operation Bolton, part of Operation Southern Watch in southern Iraq, before she was redeployed to the Balkans to support the NATO action against Yugoslavia over Kosovo. There, while her helicopters aided refugees, her Harriers were involved in military strikes. During 2003, she was involved in a Top Gear episode involving the Black Stig. Not being racist, he was dressed in a black suit. Anyway, the Stig was driving a Jaguar XJS known as the Top Gear Jag, on the deck to attempt to reach 100 miles per hour and stop before the end of the runway. The attempt failed, resulting in the Black Stig and the Jaguar ending up in the sea. Now, Jeremy Clarkson ended up in the show holding one of Stig's gloves, claiming that it was the only thing the salvage crew could actually find of the Stig. Now, the old Stig was replaced with the first white Stig in the next episode, the car was actually driven up the ramp on the flight deck, and then the following day, the car was actually propelled off the ramp using a high-pressure rig. The funny thing is, the car was never recovered. See? You wouldn't guess that from the actual uh, episode, would you? Well, now you know. On June 6th, 2005, the MOD announced that Invincible would be inactive until 2010, but available for reactivation at 18 months' notice. She was decommissioned on the 3rd of August 2005, 20 months after an extensive refit that had intended to give her 10 more years of service. Illustrious would then take over as flagship of the fleet. Now, the Royal Navy maintained Invincible could be deployed had the need arisen, and the Navy's policy assumed she was still an active aircraft carrier. Now, according to James, however, Invincible had been cannibalised for parts for her sister ships to keep them running, which in theory, would actually have a knock-on effect, meaning the 18 months would probably be making new parts and fitting them. Which isn't a really good thing. Just look at Albion and Bulwark at the moment. But by March 2010, Invincible was tied up and minimally maintained with the other decommissioned ships upriver of Portsmouth Naval Base. On the 10th of September 2010, she was then subsequently struck off the Navy's reserve list and in December, offered for sale by the Disposal Service Authority, with tenders due by the 5th of January 2011. The DSA tender documents confirmed that the ship's engines had been removed and its generators and pumps were generally unserviceable or not working. On the 8th of January 2011, the British press relayed an early report from the South China Morning Post, now, there was a £5 million bid to make the ship a UK-based Chinese businessman, Lam King Bong. He basically had plans for her to moor her in Liverpool as a floating international school. In light, however, of the Chinese rearming the Variag, which was then to become the Laoyang, it brought under a similar pretext, and the EU arms embargo on China, doubts were arisen as to whether the such sale would go ahead. Now, a month later, in February 2011, the BBC News reported that the MOD had announced the sale of Invincible to Lael Ship Recycling in Turkey, which was then subsequently towed out of Portsmouth on the 24th of March and arrived at the yard 
in Turkey on the 12th of April for scrapping, and by June 2011, work was underway to break up the ship. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so that's the end of that video. Hopefully you learned something new, because I most certainly did. Now, if you want to go and support the channel, there is a link in the description below to the Patreon page. I would recommend doing it, but it's up to you. Also, if you want to come and talk to me, there's a link in the description for the Discord channel. There's a couple of good guys over there. We talk about a wide variety of stuff. So yeah, so thanks for watching, guys. Hit that notification button to stay up to date with what I'm uploading. And obviously, give it a like, give it a subscribe if you really want to, and comments are always good. I like reading your comments. So take care. Catch you next time.